I think, uh, you know, go with something tried and true. Nothing wrong with that. Five seconds so remaining. My question is now, I'm thinking it's going to be Moose on the Marana and Whisper on the Mars. So that means that this is a position five, Phoenix. Oh, actually, it could be Schofield on the Marana. My bad, my bad. Schofield yeah. on the Marana and then obviously Moose on that. And Moose plays a very good Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So that In still the... leaves Chris Lux hero and Hector's hero. And they still have, uh, I, I guess they're struggling to deal with the Phoenix right now. They don't have any egg scramblers at this point. So, nope. and Void Spirit doesn't really fix that problem either. I mean, he can get around the arena in and out of that with his Astral Step, but committing that and then getting on an egg, you're still not great with it. You want to pick up uh, some ranged heroes, like uh, to have like a, a Snapfire Marana on your own team. But, you know, Marana's been picked up by the enemy, so it's just not an option here. And I don't think now, they play the Snapfire mid now that they have the Void Spirit picked up. Otherwise, it's just such a good hero. But with the supports already picked and also the Void Spirit most likely going mid, there's just no room for it any longer. Yep. So uh, clock it down some of his reserve time here. They're probably going to pick up Chris Lux hero now. Um, no, I imagine. The Void Spirit. The... Yeah. No, oh. the corrector. All right, uh, they take the Sven. Now, in the last tournament, uh, BTS Pro Series, I saw Hector go for Midas on the Sven, and I absolutely hated it, which is a surprise because, you know, normally uh, Hector plays I amazing. Hector yeah, I love what Hector does. He always finds farm on the map. It doesn't really matter what happens with his team. He's going to come online one way or another. But he had some pretty bad games, and... You know, these heroes like uh, Medusa and Sven, I feel like they farm much better with a Mask of Madness than they do with the, with the Hand of Midas. So it surprised me. Radiant I mean, you have back. that fight potential, you have that life steal, uh, and it comes online and builds a little bit better than the Hand of Midas. So I didn't like it. Maybe he's like, took a look at those games, thought, okay, we definitely lost these, or we maybe lost these that we could have won if I was able to participate in fights a little bit more. I should go for this Mask of Madness rather yes. than the Hand of Midas. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope he's like, learned his lesson from the last time, Five but uh, we'll see. Remaining. Again, whenever, whenever he does bad, you feel like just there's something fundamentally wrong with Beast Coast that game, because he is the beating heart of their team. He definitely is the pulse line for them. Um, it's really at the very core of it is when all well, else like that fails. Word, but I, don't, I like that word, but I don't understand it. Which one? Pulse line. Like the actual like rhythm, the beat, the, the Ooh, pulse. That's a good word. Because when all else fails, when all else fails, when Chris Luck has trouble with mid, when Whisper's struggling in that offline, when the supports are doing, everything is done to keep this player enabled. They will. I've seen Schofield throw his body into the enemy team because he's like, Hector needs more time. He needs more time, and I need to find some way to make space. So I'm just going to keep throwing myself just nonstop over here until he gets it. And sometimes it works out, and sometimes Schofield just starts feeding. It is what it is. But like, again, when all else fails, they really do turn to Hector and they really just trust in his ability to carry them. I do like this pickup, though. I like the Ember Spirit. I feel like it's going to do really well here in this game, being very mobile. They don't have great ways of shutting him down. Um, in fact, all the heroes really are quite mobile on the side of Beast Coast, right? Because you're going to get the Blink Dagger on Mars. Marana has the Leap. Phoenix has Swoop. Ember's got the Remnants. And then Sven, eventually, he's going to have the, the Aghanim Scepter, because that's just part of his kit now. It's just too good not to have, especially with that talent where it dispels. So I look at what Spirits has here, and I'm worried because I don't think they've got enough going on here that's going to be able to keep them in this game for the Spectre to get big. Yeah. And, you know, even if Spectre does get big, Sven is a pretty good solution to the Spectre a lot of the time. But he does, uh, he likes building an Echo Saber, and that does build into a Silver Edge now, which is amazing against the Spectre. But uh, they've got a minute of reserve time to think about what they want to grab here. But I feel as if they need, like, uh, some sort of low cooldown stun lockdown to deal with this enemy team. Uh, the Aether Remnant and uh, the Lift just aren't enough. Lift actually has a pretty big cooldown. They're like 23 seconds. This is a hero I, I think my second most played hero. If I don't know this, I'm going to... 22 seconds. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's over for me. I'm never going to work or summon again, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Legion Commander picked up last. Right. That's some decent lockdown. I don't. It's not enough. It's not, not enough when you look at what this team has. They're so mobile. You know, I like Legion Commander. I think that uh, 
you know, she's got a great place within Dota, especially considering that she has a soft dispel and a hard dispel. Um, or sorry, not a, I'm thinking of Oracle, my goodness. She does have, you know, those dispels that just make her really, really strong. But okay, she's going to dispel Flame Spirits and maybe Searing Chains. Like there's so many other things happening. And I just feel like they're going to need more lockdown. I don't know. Um, this is really going to depend on Minnie and Hayne just popping off this game because they need to make so much space for Benny. And it's going to be difficult because you look at what the enemy team's got. Like just the moves and, and Schofield lane is terrifying. Oh my God, it's Schofield playing the Mars. Okay, Whispers on the Phoenix. So it's not that lane. All right. Uh, that threw me for a little bit of a loop. I thought that you would want to lane those two together because it's such a strong combo, but apparently Beast Coast doesn't care. Beast Coast does not care. That is uh, interesting. You know, maybe they're just ahead of the curve. They know better than everybody else. Um, I mean, Phoenix is excellent with uh, Tanky Frontliner, so on that hand, it makes sense? Question mark? It's a little bit more survivability, and, like, they can kind of mess with the, uh, the Spectre by throwing out the Flame Spirits? I don't know. Maybe that's why they adjusted, because there's the Legion Commander thinking yeah. that. But I would I think I would have preferred to see them run a Mars lane. I feel like it's very strong. But I'm sure we'll see it later on once we're past the uh laning phase. We'll start to see them do some tricks together. And this is, of course, you know, when you consider the fact that they're both supports, they're gonna be able to roam too, right? So while the rest of the team is busy hitting creeps, you'll still have Schofield and Moose moving around the map together. Um it just feels a little weird having Schofield on a position for Mars. You know, there was a joke between uh, me and my friends about, you know, Neff plays US West, pause for boots first Mars. And now that Beast Coast is running it uh, in the very same patch that I was doing it, I feel like uh, I've been validated, you know, especially if they win this game. So I'm personally... Then you're, you know, I'm, you're personally a 10K player like Schofield? Yeah, I, I actually just get his MMR at that point. So I'm rooting for Beast Coast this game. I need them to win for this position for Mars. Just I don't so, think it's good. I don't think it's good, but I need them to win this game for me. I mean, if they win it, then it is good, right? Yeah, that's how that, I, that's how that one works. Mm -hmm. Or just Schofield is a godlike player. And let's be honest, Schofield is a godlike player. Yeah. He really is. He he has these games where he just pops off the entire time. Then he has these other games where he just quietly exists. Almost always does his job, though. Maso managing to get that arrow. Not going to quite connect here from Moose. So feel taking a lot of damage. Just forced to use some of that region as Ector forced back. And it looks like they're going to try to do an aggro try here. Does manage to snap up this bounty rune. Interesting. Or not aggro try. I'm sorry. My brain is... That is okay. Looks like uh, the brain of Wage isn't working too good either. You know, he gets himself pushed back in the tree. Actually, Schofield is the one that needs to run away. Yeah, he's thankfully, got he's got... Oh, he's got boots first, thankfully, to... Low movement speed of Trim Protector. He's got to be having regen sent out to him, right? Mm hmm Yeah. I was just waiting for him behind the tower. I was like looking, I was like, he's definitely got something sent out to him and I saw the courier over on the side. It's that naked Grievel, I hate that Grievel. Yeah, you know, it's in the Halloween spirit, but uh... It's not a Halloween. It's terrifying, so it's an Halloween spirit. Not everything that's Halloween related has to be terrifying, dude. My birthday's Halloween, I'm not terrifying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. All right, then. I'm spoopy, I guess. Mid lane, though, here between Mini and Chris Luck. Definitely think that Chris Luck has the advantage here, uh, just in terms of skill, but is uh, pretty much closely tied up here with Mini at this time. Of course, they are only sitting at... Uh, oh, Chris has uh, level 3, and Mini's sitting at level 2 right now, so a little bit of an advantage going over to the Ember. And uh, it's just going to be the nature of uh, the start of this lane. I mean, the Ember Spirit has a little bit more armor, whatnot to, to fall back on. But you know, once you have a couple of levels, I think uh, the the Void Spirit just has better spells for taking CS here. You know, 
the the resonant pulse, uh, the aether revenant just better for securing the last hits than of course the sleight of fist, which only does half damage to creeps. Finally came up for air. So I'm gonna be honest here, and I'm gonna say I feel like this game is gonna go really well for Beast Coast. My reasoning behind it is the fact that Chris Luck is going to have a very comfortable lane, and when Chris Luck has a comfortable lane. The other lanes do very well. And there's a bit of a hop over here coming out from Moose as he gets the first blood on Ma. And he's got, oh, he manages to get the uphill miss chance too from that tower. He just salves right back up and goes back to support Nektor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with uh, Kill under their belt already uh, started this game, Hector, he's very happy, you know? Yeah. He likes those big hero sized creeps, especially. <laughs> Maybe not as uh, murderous as Bakaz, but definitely, definitely a guy who's going to take advantage whenever the situation presents itself to him. Couple trades over here with Ma. Top has been pretty quiet for the most part, and Wages has just been trying to pull the creep wave whenever he can, try to give his specter a little more breathing room. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, kind of what you have to do. You don't want to play too close to the creep wave. You don't have very much armor. Uh, the Mars is going to trade favorably with you. You want to kind of bait them away from uh, Benny over here. Oh, God. This is what you get with, like, your one was at 1.9 base attack time on Trina Protector. Mm -hmm. You just don't get to attack any of the fire spirits on you. This is very sad. Pause comes out, and uh, you know we're four minutes. Sorry, three minutes forty nine seconds of the game. Uh, first power rune is going to spawn. Both these guys have bottle, so whoever gets this is going to have a uh, significant advantage here in the mid lane. But doing a decent job right now on um, the Ember Spirit. As I said, though, you know things had started going towards Mini's favor again. Uh, this first couple of levels, it is much easier for him to secure these extra last hits with the Resonant Pulse. He trades a little bit better as well. You know, just uh, once he has that physical damage shield for a little bit, he just gets the extra auto attacking on the Ember. Has to be careful at six, though, because you do have a, a bit better roaming potential, like being able to get in and out of your base, back up to full mana just by like TPing out. So I, I, I think Ember Spirit is a bit better at what both these spirit heroes do as far as like the reach, the catch, and being able to disengage and reengage into fights. I'll agree with that. I definitely think that uh, Ember just has a little bit more in his kit that enables him to be a bit trickier, especially because of the fact that you can go drop the rem drop those remnants around the map and then zip right to them. We saw Gunner do that a couple times earlier in the four Zoomer matches where he was just able to sidestep by hitting that button just fast enough right before they were trying to get the stun off on him or swap or whatnot. So. Hmm. But Void Spirit's still good. I mean, you talk to the uh, the NA player Shaggy, he plays quite a bit of this hero. Oh, the Haste Rune. Many managing to grab it up right in the nick of time. So he's going to have a nice full bottle, whereas Chris Luck's not going to have that. But I'm sure if one of his teammates TPs into the mid lane, they'll happily refill it for him. Yep. I mean, if you get that on Chris Luck, you have a uh, kill potential on another lane all of a sudden. But uh, on Mini, I think he just wants to sit inside the lane at least until he's level 6. He has a lot more damage once he has his Astral Step. Mm -hmm. Chris Luck still being very aggressive, though, over here in this mid lane, making sure he's grabbing a pull to CS. He's pulled a little bit ahead now, not by much. And Hector's just hitting creeps like he does. Mm -hmm. not quite a slow Pops not the late. haste. Uh... No. Whisper oh. taking a little bit of damage. Does have the Icarus dive, though, if necessary. Schofield, though, does have to be careful. He's got a spear in case he needs to toss it out. If any like commits, though. Uh... Oh, he put himself in a pretty bad position now. But Chris Luck is here. Benny getting chased here by Chris Luck. Can't believe Schofield actually manages to walk away from that. Does have a couple wand charges. Not a lot, but Chris Luck will happily refill his bottle and go all the way back up again. Rocky has to walk all the way back to boost. Feels really bad on such a low movement speed hero, but you know, at least he does have the boots of speed. I remember when he was like so fast. Yeah, those were the days. Those were terrifying when you're playing Crystal Maiden. You're just getting chased down by a giant tree who's just punching you to death. Or the worst is when they beast. used to. Uh, do you remember when they used to have the action rune spawn at the zero minute mark? Oh yeah, and he would just get a haste. He'd get a haste, just beat you to death. Level one. 
Not even, no need for, uh, oh, I bet Chris Luck is going to wish that he was able to go refill his bottle on Schofield, but. Are you a good here. mid player or not? Do you win this 50 50? No, Chris he's got Luck? it, yeah. Look at him. Yep. It's the end when... of his round. I'd like to see him maybe rotate here. That when you're good, fixed. you're good. Uh, he's less so going for a, uh, a kill build, though. You know, he's maxed out his flame guard. That means he wants to be able to see us. Uh, that's what this build is for, for sure. I didn't even max out Slay to Fist. Normally, you see people go, was it uh, zero, uh, four, two? But actually, when you, you opt to this, you're kind of conceding and accepting that you're going to go farm the jungle. K1 teleports back down the bottom lane. He is sitting at the top of the CS chart, as he should. You know, that is uh, K1's job. I mean, team needs a second here, though. He's actually got the Midas queued up again. Hector, he just doesn't learn. Yeah, um, I, mm, I'd prefer to see that Mask of Madness, like you said, but, you know, Hector is just going to do Hector things. and I don't know, Moxie. <laughs> I, I shouldn't question, you know, K1 God. This man, uh, he is the most efficient farmer. You know, no, everyone has just kind of accepted that he's the best position one player. He will find farm no matter what happens. He just kind of got to deal with his team, but the Midas on Sven, I feel like. What are they, all right, what are they saying? They're saying that, uh, well, I'm just Argentino Loco um, saying that Benny. Por que fuiste? They're just talking about how uh, Benny's having some issues, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, is back. My Espanol is not super, super great. I'm better, like, speaking. Mm. There you go, Neff. Learn another language. Learn some uh, Learn some Spanish. I, my French is probably as good as uh, your Spanish. I can understand what some, the gist of what somebody's saying to me because I need to being Canadian. Right. But, you know, my parents tried to put me in French immersion school, and you know, I barely learned how to read. So <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine how that went. All right. I took a little bit of, um, so I took Spanish in high school and then my major in college was of course vocal performance. So I had to learn how to at least be able to pronounce everything in at least four oh, different languages. Look, get a load of Moxie everyone. She's qualified for this job. <laughs> Shut up, dude. What the heck? <laughs> Throw me under the bus. I was just gonna say that like, my French is not super great. I had a little bit of difficulties in my French, uh, diction class but i had german italian french and russian so those were my languages mm -hmm. but i went to the school of na stage. dota <laughs> the school of hard knocks <laughs> yeah. neff was raised in the streets guys <laughs> where our dota was born from the cesspool of the gutters it was either kill or be killed so come or make it and he, he came out of the uh the pool he's a big tall boy very strong. Nothing can kill him. Nothing can take him down. Still yeah. wear a mask, though. Still wear a mask. <laughs> but yeah, they're having a little bit of ping issues. I believe we're playing on pro servers right now. Um, I'm not uh, sure if they is... trade back and forth on that. Can you check for that for me there? Sir? That is correct. We're on Peru servers, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the Brazilians have a little bit more of a difficulty on this. They've always had this issue. Oh, Minnie. Mm, that boy mm -hmm. just ain't right. We need to have an intervention with him. Mm -hmm. We're gonna. Good. I'll sit him down after this game. I know the manager of the team. Give him a good dad talk, you know. Yeah. Say, hey, kid. Listen, I know what it's like to be young and excited all the time, but you gotta relax. <laughs> You're playing professional video games right now. There's uh, several thousand people watching you. They'll remember this. God, As they will you. remember this. It'll always exist on the internet. That's one thing that all young people need to remember is that anything you put on on the internet, it's there forever. It doesn't go away. That's not true. Some of the things that uh, these other, these tier one now Dota players have done no longer exist on the internet. They scrub that stuff clean, Moxie. <laughs> You're supposed to be promoting NA Dota now. Oh, right. Not ruining it. I mean, there's, uh, there's some big skeletons in the closet of some of these guys. I don't know what you're talking about. These guys would never. I think, like, uh, 
They work at chair, soup kitchens in their spare time. I mean, this is yeah. SA Dota, right? SA Dota, mm -hmm. they're toxic in their pubs. But as far as I know, they uh, that's the worst of it, is that they're just very toxic. Yeah. See, look, Minnie, just, he knows, he knows. Minnie's a tilter. It's known, it is known. I think he's just sad because nobody responded to him. That could Hain, be it. Hain We're not going to enable Mini about this, though. We're staying yeah. strong, guys. Staying strong. But, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what's going to happen here. They do have some very mobile heroes, right? You've got Mini on the Void Spirit. He's sitting at his level 6. Hasn't quite gotten a great rune, though, just yet. And is still working on at least his phase boots. Hain down here sitting at level 5. I'm guessing he's going to want to stick around here um, <laughs> and continue to, uh, you know get those levels online, maybe grab himself uh, some sort of an item before he makes moves. But while this is all going down, everyone else on the side of business associates, they scale faster, you know? And that's pretty worrisome. Phoenix sitting at level business five. Business associate? You mean Beast Coast? Beast Coast. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm looking at moves. No worries. That's why. God, I can't look at that name without hearing Purge, like get really angry about it. He really <laughs> hates that name. He's, oh man. Moose? I think he was actually glad. Business Associates. He hates the name uh, Business Associates. Why? Because it's too many syllables for Purge. Business Associates. So he's just like, I'm just going to call them Busy Ass. And I was like, Purge, you can't call them that. For but God he's like, sake, who's going to stop me, Moxie? They're not going to stop me. So I had to listen to him say Busy Ass for like, I don't know, how many days over in one of the other tournaments. And it just made me laugh every time, even though I didn't want to laugh. I didn't want to enable it. <sighs> About three right. minutes left of pause time here for spirits. Yeah. Move away from purge, you know, trying to make him pronounce things. is just a little bit too much work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, purge, he's all about efficiency. There were just too many syllables for that he name is. to be efficient. That is true. You know, it would be difficult to, you know, communicating which team you're playing against in a uh, speedy amount or efficient amount of time in a speedy way. Right. He's also making fun of my stick figures the other day, too, saying that my stick figure didn't have toes. Yeah, I think that's a weird feet thing that Purge has going on. Wants to see stick figures with toes. I don't know. I don't want to get into his fetishes. I, I Yeah, let's not. Let's definitely not. I, but I'm most creeped out that he wanted to see toes on the picture of me. That's the real weird <laughs> one. <laughs> Hide your feet enough. Purge is coming. <laughs> Uh, looks like almost everyone has reconnected, but Minnie now has disconnected. So uh, hopefully his uh, massive files of Amelia Clark photos are not causing his computer to crash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's and see. And we're disconnected again. Oh, oh no. They're, they're going to have to play soon because they're running out of, of pause time. That's yeah, not the admin is going to force the issue. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, I think, oh no. oh, no, they're losing even more players now. They're dropping like flies. They definitely need to be forcing these issues in these tournaments, though, because uh, it becomes uh, pretty bad when um, the admin say it's up to the other team whether or not they want to continue with the pause tie, but then it creates these massive rivalries between the two teams. You know, the tournament admin just need to tank the gank, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I've been lucky. A lot of the BTS guys have been pretty good about that in the tournaments that I've casted. They've just been like, all right, I'm sorry, you're out of pause time. We're going. Yeah. They don't even offer like, oh, you know, we can wait or whatever. They're like, nope, this is the rules. And I know people don't like to be rule booked, but it just makes things easier and just for the managers and for the players. So they don't have to make that decision. They don't have to worry about looking like the bad guys. Yeah. So Sometimes... Sometimes the, the teams are the bad guys, though. Yeah, sometimes we can all be the bad guy. Not me. You're a delight. True. I am. I feel like we should teach you some Espanol. Since we mm. are, we're paused right now. So, Is, are you going to quiz me on this as the days go I forward? Might. I might <sighs> quiz you on this. Oh, no. So what, what right. should we what what should we do here? Should we just teach you some basic stuff? I feel like you probably already know the basic stuff, yeah? Eh, let's give me something I might know. I'd okay, say how, that I don't know any basics. How do you say good morning in Espanol? 
I've said it a couple times now in these casts, and he's giving me this blank look right now. Hello? Uh, I mean, that's hello. You cut out there for a little bit, Moxie. Did I really? I don't think I did. He's trying to download a third-party routing program. Well, that's what? interesting. How about we talk about that one? Uh, wow. Well, all it. right. All right. Well, <laughs> enough successfully sidestepping his uh, Spanish lesson here. Shake my head. Okay, this one. Nice. It's just trying. like being back in school. Reconnect to the game. Right. I'm not sure this is going to fix the problem. If you thought that was going to work. Heck, yeah. We're back at hitting these creeps. We're just going to have to play it as a ghost here because I think they're out of pause time. God, strength coming out here from Ekdor. They immediately fortify the creeps. Sad Ekdor, Sag. Yeah, that's going to mess with his efficiency. He's not going to like that one one bit at all. Ekdor Engi. Yeah. But, like, take a look over here. Mini joining into the fight is going to find Moose. He's going to jump forward here over onto Ector, draw him right back in again. This is not looking super great as they get the lift off, toss right back underneath the tower, and down goes Ector. So not only was he not able to hit those creeps that he really wanted to hit, he also will die while he's got the god strength online. Now, I suppose that is the one way that you can bring down Hector. You know, you bought himself, you bought in or your team a little bit of extra time by fortifying the creeps he's got god's strength on he says i'm gonna wait here until i can hit these creeps and that gave void spare enough time to rotate down there even though he knew he was coming his greed has gotten to him and he dies for it he's still gonna go for that midas yeah he's still gonna go for that Midas. though i mean he's committed to, I mean, you buy the gloves of haste you really need to commit to like a 1700 gold item after grabbing it i don't feel like that's the play here dude but he's gonna do it anyways because he's Hector. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if there's one thing that's going to cost him the game, it's this. I mean, the Mask of Madness just farms faster. You clear the creep camps out. Uh, you keep your HP topped up. It just makes sense to me. I, I don't know why you would ever go Midas over it. Maybe Hector's done the math. Top lane. Luck going to go and cut himself down a tree. Down goes Noages. And uh, it's a good rotation because they're even able to go and grab up the stack here while they're at it. Yep. No, they find themselves, themselves two neutral items while they're doing that. Wow. Yeah. Very happy grabbing this faded brooch here. This is pretty Drop. nice now, too, because Hector is now off farming. So Moose is going to get a little quality time here with the creep wave. And he's a good hero to be able to get this because he can get the levels. He's also got a way to disengage if they try to go for a dive. Multiple waves, actually. So mm -hmm. just going to absorb some of that XP and get a little farm online. He's what? working on a Yule's. Jump over they... here onto Hector. They're really just hunting him. That does have the Moonlight Shadow, though, so he's going to back off. Mm -hmm. He's forced to walk pretty far back, but, you know, Minis, he might expect him to be greedy. Oh, my God, he's reading his movements. He's too Knows good. Knows exactly where he is, the step forward. Do they have enough? Yes, they do. Mini finds the kill. Schofield can't do anything here other than just take over these creeps that Hector will not be killing. Oh Ooh, my god, and the all that mini. Damn, son. You love to see it. You know, he he's he just predicting what Hector's gonna go. You know what? This is the most efficient farmer in SA Dota. I know as soon as I step away from him, this guy's not gonna go back to heal. He's not gonna go into his triangle. He's gonna farm the jungle. He's gonna go for the most efficient farm he possibly can. And that's how you make him pay. They do. They do indeed. Gofield sitting up over here on the high ground. They'll be able to go and they find the Ember. Chris Luck just going to spend a little time up top. Seems like he's okay with this for now, though. As they go, they grab up these runes. And Chris Luck just zips away, grabs himself the Invis. He's going back on in. He wants to get himself a Ma, it looks like. Here's Gofield, though, taking a lot of damage. Looks like Chris Luck to turn his attention. The spear goes out. Doesn't quite connect here. He managed to go and he skills up that Mars. Well, gets the God's Rebuke. Chris Luck still going to be able to go get the kill. And now just walk away. So I got pretty good uh, rundown ability. I think this is faded brooch as well. A bigger mana pool and whatnot. And he clears up this stack. It feels pretty bad for your team here. Awesome if you're Chris Luck, though. But, you know, uh, they're doing a pretty good job at slowing down Hector's game. And he went for this hand of Midas regardless of uh, getting killed twice right there. And there he goes again, you know, continuing to farm up group camp with that god strength, trying to do things the most efficient way possible. Exactly. He's very safe inside this triangle, though. And, of course, he's got the ward over here and over here. So they're going to see most movements into the triangle. Unless they smoke. Unless they smoke. 
Oh, there you see that right there by Hector? Almost missed that stack. Those are the storm bolt in order to keep the creep in place so it didn't block it for him. This guy's good. He is nothing if efficient. Nagi's making his way over here to the middle. Like just gonna teleport out here, refill his bottle, get some more health and mana up, and then zip right back in again. He's back, throws out a casual. Oh, arrow lands over onto me, but I don't think they want to go in on this. Not with the other two supports standing nearby. In the top lane, you get the haunt out. Benny trying to run away here. It looks like he's going to be able to do it. The egg will pop. Benny, he went back. Go back up. Oh my god, I think he thought that Minnie was going to be able to save him, but he's going to go down. They do manage to get the dual victory over on Hain, though. And while all this is going down here, Chris Luck playing around with Ma and Nuages. But not mm -hmm. finding any success. So Spectre goes down, and they end up losing Schofield. But uh, the Paws 1 for the Paws 4, and a little bit of dual damage, I guess. I think you're still okay with that if you're Beast Coast. Uh, yeah. picked up on Chris Luck. Does get cancelled out by Nuages. Pretty tanky here, but looks like Chris really wants this man just to land the chain. Couple hits, one, two, zips on through, finds himself a Ma. And uh, Ma grabbing up that remnant does manage to go and run away, but this is making it very easy for Chris to put some pressure on this tower. It's going to heal back up, though. They've uh, up to go three points early on to the living armor. They, you know, they're getting some damage in the tower's uh, top and mid lane, so they'll keep those healed up and probably try to take some map control, get some towers of their own. Okay, one uh, continuing to farm up the triangle to save his area of the map he possibly can. Wards Super around surprised it as well. that they're not trying to smoke into here, not trying to put pressure on him, because like you said, Hector, he just wants to farm. He's just going to farm nonstop. He's going to sit very, very low, and they could follow up and get some good dual damage here for Hain, but putting a lot of attention over here in this mid lane, but going for the duel. They've got the Astral Step with the Sunray coming in. Is it going to be enough to keep Chris looking like, oh, it's so close. Almost able to do it. Whisper here with that Sunray is going to get dragged back in over here. Has the uh, Icarus die. This should be able to get the kill onto Minnie. Doesn't have the egg for another three seconds, but without the rest of his team there, I don't think he's going to to pop it anyways as they walk away. And uh, Moose still holding down the fort here in the bottom lane. Hmm. Well, who's he healing up right now? He's healing up Benny, who's practically at full HP. I'm not sure that's the most efficient when they're pushing through your mid lane, but they're smoked up and they're heading towards bottom. Oh, but Mar TPing in. Looking to get an arena off here. He knows that Nuages is over here in the tree line, but I feel like they want to commit just for the pause five. But while this is happening, Mr. Hector in the top lane, still just hitting up these creeps. He's gonna have that Echo Saber soon. I see Hain. Lots of movement down here with the Moonlight Shadow. They'll slow them down with the Icarus. They'll follow up, though. That's a nice egg here. And the gets arrowed down, and they catch all three of these people over here in the arena. Egg will pop. Benny will go down. And now Mini, the only one still alive. He's still ticking down to the Sunray. He needs to try to run away, and it looks like he's just going to be able to get out of there. No yeah. real chase just available on any of these other heroes quite yet. Yeah. Ooh, to go they managed to land. And... They might actually get Mini here. Moose is going to pop, but I think he's going to pay for this with his life. He definitely is, as Ma now comes in, grabs up that spear. Looking mm -hmm. to get a hit off, and he does have the telekinesis to help line it up, so that spear of Mars could be a good initiation now, but still throwing down some more damage over here onto Nuages. Fear, not quite connecting. The Icarus dive gets thrown out for the slow sunrise. Also going to get used, and he's tanky, but he's not tanky but enough when you use the sunrise. In fact, we'll just turn it right back around again, get a little healing off over onto Schofield. And Chris Luck poking away over here at Hain. There's going to be a haunt being thrown out, though, as Schofield is sitting so very, very low. They'll still be able to go and get the dual damage on Hain, though. So he's up to 40 dual damage. The lift back over here on Chris Luck, but they don't have enough hold into places. What? They push him a little bit too far here, and it doesn't connect over onto a tree. Or anything. I don't know. No, that was a little weird. No, no tree to connect it to. I thought it would have got him on the side of that cliff there, but I guess not. So. A little and too round. It just grazed off, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Need sharper <laughs> corners there or something. <laughs> and he uh, uh, turns his eye bottom, and he's going to try to shove this out with the catapult. They get this bottom tower, open up the jungle, make things a little bit easier for him. And Hector, again, just... Doing Ector things, he's sitting at 8.9k net worth. Nobody has bothered this man. They got him a couple times during the laning phase, and then they all just forgot about him. 
Well, and that's the thing. I mean, they had the the wards in like the safest places possible to stop him from rotating on the triangle. Yes, he, he farmed probably a little bit too aggressively at the start. Uh, he didn't have the mask of madness, so he wasn't able to heal up. He's sitting at pretty low HP when he is inside the jungle. Uh, but after that, I mean, after his two deaths, he played uh, safe in the triangle and then forced his team to take fights against the enemy. Speaking of... Goldfield, he was trying to get that arena, and he does manage to get it off just in time as he grabs three different people here. Chris Luck finding a kill. It's going to go right back in. Kiduagas, that's going to be a double kill. They're looking for a triple here as Moose. He has finished up that Yule Scepter. He's going to get immediately just cut down into pieces. Chris Luck having the game of his life right now. Ma, he can't run away. You're toast, too. Come to Chris. I'll to kill for Chris Luck and, you know, <laughs> Look uh, at Hector. Back down to bottom. <laughs> We're good here, guys, yeah. right? You can you can handle this. See you later. <laughs> yes, I've got uh, some important business to take care of elsewhere. Carry on, team. Uh, Benny he senses danger and he moves back into the trees here. Definitely the move that he wants to make. But the enemies, uh, they're not going to be able to find him, though. See if uh, they try to make a move on to Hector down here. He is an acceptable part of the map. You know they have to uh, run pretty far in order to grab. Well, the tier one is down there. I know the Ember Spirit's top, and they're probably going to be playing a bunch of heroes pretty close to him. But you know he's got his BKB now on Hector, actually. So I, I think your window of uh, being able to blow him up very easily has closed. It's all magic damage you have at this point. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, to be fair, you know, they do have options to kind of deal with the fact that uh, he has a BKB, right? They've got the overgrowth. Uh-oh, mini? Chris Luck just playing around with him a little bit. He's so... Oh, mini, he eats that arrow right to the face. They jump that. Nah, that's living armor. Not going to be enough. There's a slide coming out from Chris. Moves hot on the heels here. Does have himself the Yules. Like we said, great for catching. Doesn't have the arrow, though. Already used to. Oh, Hane just barely manages to get out of that arena right in the nick of time. But uh, oh. over here on the side, there's a nice double damage rune here available. I'm sure uh, Mr. Whisper will point that out. Or maybe Chris Luck will want to snap it up. Yeah, it's going to go uh... Chris. Questionable. I would have imagined that Sved would take it and then just go to do Roshan with it, but I suppose you have a little bit better attack speed with uh, Ember Spirit. Or, you know, they don't commit it at all. They pop the God's Strength, but they want to keep this double damage rune for this next team fight here. And I think that's fine. Spirits, they don't realize that they're doing this. I mean, even if they did realize they were doing it, I don't think they can fight into it. Oh, Spectre went Blade Mail. That's how this game is going. Benny. They smoke He's up and they, real hard. Yeah, they want to fight into this. Duel. All right, they get the duel. Jump over onto Whisper. And they'll get themselves some more dual damage onto Haynes. So it was a good pickoff here, but Hector. Oh, Hector. Oh, all right. There's the lift. He wants to fight, though. Overgrowth is going to get used. So we'll hold him into place over on the back line. So Chris Luck just is moving around like a crazy man here. Got his eyes over here on Benny. He's going to throw out the Spectral Dagger on the back lines. It's not looking really good for Hain. It's Chris Luck just zeroing in over here. And again, they do have the Blade Mail, but they can just hit him to a tree and wait it out. Chris Luck taking so much damage, though, because he does have that double damage. This is not looking good for him. It's going to be the Aegis that gets popped. Benny, though, going to get healed up. They have the arena. You're not going anywhere, Benny. You're going to stay right here with us. And just like that, Beast Coast gets themselves Four kills. I'm not sure how Hain survived that. I figured he would have gone down, but on the bright side, don't have those creeps just yet. So they're not going to be able to go and rip down the tower for another couple seconds. You don't increase your GPM by ripping down the tower, says Hector, though. It moves right into the jungle while he waits. He says, team, please go grab those bounty runes as well. I would like that gold. Yeah. I should have gonna go to... Grab them. <laughs> Look at me, reduced to grabbing my own bounty runes. What is this life? <laughs> <laughs> Where are my lands? Where are my servants who should be getting this for me? He says. Find himself a bunch of range creeps up here as well. But, uh, this game is getting pretty hard for uh, Side of Spirits. Now 17k net worth up. And you can get these duels off onto Whisper, sure, but I, I feel as if these kills don't really matter. You need to start finding more solutions for Hector. Benny had a, a pretty good idea of how to deal with it at the start, but you know, he just started farming safe areas. And once he was off the map, uh, his team didn't really go for it. Inspector isn't going to come online the same way. You need to be able to punish uh, him going for that Midas on the Sven. 
Well, I mean, Spectre was forced into such a defensive build, right? She's got the drums and she's got the blade mail here because she's got to find a way to stay alive long enough when they jump on her. It's, it's going to be difficult. It's an 18k net worth lead right now. And Hayne is doing a, a decent job considering, you know, he's gotten this dual damage. He's got 60 underneath his belt. And he's been pairing up with Mini to make these moves across the map. But I just don't think it's quite enough. Schofield going to run into both of them. Moonlight Shadow gets used. They use the silence. Moves getting into position, though, for this arrow. Doesn't quite manage to go for it just yet. They'll go in the whole month, though. So they have vision on him. And Chris Luck says, oh, if you're just going to hold still, don't mind if I do. I'm taking down Wagis. He tries to run, but he's only level eight. Yeah, no. I think uh, there's just not. Okay. All right. He manages to get out. I thought for sure that he was dead. The rune of regeneration. TP's on the nick of time. Moo spotting out Hane over here. He's looking for the arrow. Oh, misses the arrow, but you know what? It's okay. He's got a yield. He's going to cancel out that TP. As in comes Chris. Would love to get himself yet another kill. The sun right comes out. They've got the spirit vessel charged. That spear right into the tree. And Chris Luck gets himself yet another kill. What's going on over here? Mini was jumping on Hector, it looks like. Oh, we've got the Ag Scepter completed. And he used his BKB during that, too. So I'm wondering if Mini jumped on him. Yeah, probably just started running him down. But at this point, he is so strong. You know, he doesn't quite. Uh, I mean, I think he just finished that item set, but just got flown out to him in the middle of that. Silence over here on Schofield as he gets drawn right back on in again. The lip of the sunray keeping him alive. As they go, Chris Luck. As the. Uh... Yeah, this is going to be a very dead Nuage. Uh, that overgrowth is very ambitious. He's got the Remnant forward, holding Mini into place. Aether Remnant buys a little bit more time, but he should still tick down to that Spirit Vessel. And now Ma left behind. Doesn't even matter. Schofield gives him with the Spear. And moves right into these uh, big camps. Midas is one of them. There you go. If it's off cooldown, I need to press it, you guys. He should. Efficiency, man. Should. The name of the game. Mm -hmm. Fortify is still up, so I'm not sure they're going to be able to push these tier 3s. They're going to get uh, shoved off of them pretty quickly here. Sun right here for Hector 2. They'll hold Hain into place, force him to try to just purge him off. Uh, they just let them. Alright, there it is. There's a fort. Yeah, he, I, think, I think he clicked the uh, the living armor onto Hain there by mistake. Definitely wanted it uh, on that tower while you had a bunch of heroes wailing away at it. But with the Fortify used, BKB is off of cooldown. He's level 20. He pops his God Strength. What's going to stop him taking this tier 3 in Rax this time around? Not much. And he does have the Agnum Scepter, so if anyone comes just a little bit too close to him, they're going to get a whole face full of Ector. In fact, that's what happens here. The BKB comes out, though. It's a good side step. They managed to go get the steal on that Storm Hammer. But just like that, they'll take down the... Uh, Take down the rocks. Chris Luck is going to go in for the duel here, but it doesn't matter. Look at that spear. Just pushes Hane away. They'll protect them. And now there's a great big old egg with an arena. This is not looking good for the spirits. As Noages falls, Benny falls, Mini falls. The GG gets called. And these Coast will take game number one. Dominating performance. Double kill. You know, uh, it looked like Mini had a good start to that. Uh, he did okay in the laning phase. He caught out Chris Luck, uh, or sorry, Hector there twice as he went for his greedy build with the Midas. But after that, they just left him alone. They let Beast Coast play Beast Coast's game. When they play the four, protect one, uh, they run at you nonstop, and Hector finds his farm. You know, it really felt like uh, they barely even needed him there. They were going to win this game 4v5. And then once he rolls up, it's just overwhelming. Yeah, um, I predicted it, right? I said that if Chris Luck has himself a really good lane, this game is 100% Beast Coast because I like what they did. They put pressure on Hector. That's smart. But the problem is everybody forgets after that. It's the same thing that happened with Pain Gaming with HFN. They would put this pressure over onto HFN and they'd force him out of the lane and be like, oh, we did it, guys. You know, pat yourselves on the back. <laughs> but then the rest of the team, all of a sudden, they show up and they're like these big terrifying heroes that are like yo you've been beaten up on our little brother what's <laughs> up and they just go and start bringing the fight to you and you never get a chance to go back and deal with the core and then all of a sudden ta-da Hector's here he's got way more farm than everybody else and he just beats the hell out of you so I mean I like what they're trying to do but it's just they needed to keep up that pressure and they weren't able to. So, you know, small victories, like I said early on, they're able to shut down Hector for a little bit, 
But then again, Chris Luck had just such an easy game. And you could see that here reflected in the score, 12, one and 15. This guy had a great time. Um, not, not as great as a time as, uh, you know, Hector with the 712 GPM, but you know, so spirits, uh, again, I didn't like the specter. I felt like it was a little too late game, especially when they showed it so early on, they knew that all they had to do was just put their foot on the accelerator on the side of East coast. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah. Uh, 100% agree with you. Um, spirits, you know, I, I need someone to just continue to punish K1 when he goes for this Midas build. He can't keep getting away with this. He needs to learn, <laughs> but uh, Beast Coast, terrifying team to play against. One of the best in the regions. They put up a pretty good fight this game. Uh, let's see if they can take a game off them going forward and it not just being a bug on the ticker. So again, this is a best of two. For some reason, in-game it was showing as game number two. It's not. So we are going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have the actual game number two of Beast Coast versus Spirits.